What's up, volleyball fans? I'm Darren Tipton, and welcome to the VB Adrenaline Podcast. Our podcast, we will dive deep into the heart of the game, bringing you the hottest topics, prospects, and a buzz surrounding prep and college volleyball, especially the world of recruiting. In each episode, our crew will spotlight rising stars who are shaking up the national game. Plus, we will serve you the scoop on current events that have coaches and fans talking courtside. Tune in for the episodes that spotlight tomorrow's college stars, new trends in the sport, plus interviews that will keep you informed on the explosion that is volleyball in the USA. You can connect with us on social media, Instagram at vbadrenaline.com underscore and Twitter at vbadrenaline. Be part of the conversation. Share your thoughts on your favorite players, prospects, and predictions by using hashtag VBAdrenaline. So grab a seat, volleyball fans, and get ready to dive into the world of spikes, sets, and serves with the VB Adrenaline Podcast. See you there. Hey, welcome into the studio. I'm joined today by Madison Mori, one of our content creators and staffers. And Maddie, thanks for uh, taking time today during your break to hop on. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, absolutely. So we tell the story about VB Adrenaline and what we're trying to do and hopping into the podcast genre of promoting volleyball. And a big part of, of us is telling the story from an athlete's perspective. And Mass, just talk about the game a little bit and how it's maybe changed even in your college career. Yeah, so the game over the past couple of years is constantly changing. There are so many different aspects that are just constantly growing. And with how much more viewers we are getting from the college level, also from the club level, it's really growing throughout the world. And it's super exciting as I'm ending up my last fourth year. It's super exciting to see how much the game is continuing to grow and how we can help it grow and spread the awareness of the sport. Yeah. And I, and I think that's one thing, a, the topics with this podcast and what we kind of want to do at VB adrenaline is we try and cover all of it and maybe we're not going to focus in on one area, but there's so many things educationally wise, recruiting wise, hot topics, all that we can record. What are some things athletes really focus on what's important to college athletes what are they tuning into what do they want to learn what do they want to hear about i think everyone loves hearing about where everyone is standing where all these top new recruits are going at and where they're looking at i think they love to listen to that information and look forward to hearing those news and i also think one thing that i really like is learning more about each athlete. I think it's super interesting to get to know them as a person. And I think Volleyball Adrenaline does a great job of sharing the athlete's story off the court and telling everyone who this player is off the court and not just as a volleyball player. So I also think that's really interesting that everyone loves to learn about as well. Yeah, for sure. For sure. What do you think about short time and we dive in a lot to the prospects and that's probably been new for you being at the college game you guys are so locked into what's going on with college you've probably learned a lot these last couple months about some of the top prospects yeah I have and it's been super cool to learn more and more it just like I was saying earlier this game is continuing to grow and it's so exciting to see how much talent these players are learning and getting at such a young age and how hard they're working to get to where they want to when they're older and hope to go the collegiate level. So it's super exciting seeing it as being a senior now and looking down. It's crazy to see how much talent there is and how everything is continually growing. So it's super exciting. And and your role here is as part of our internship, as part of uh, the internship program. And that's something, another thing that's important with us me just as a general volleyball fan, as I've watched over the years, it needs to be entertaining. And I think to, for it to be entertaining, you need to have people that are passionate about volleyball and understand the sport. And so that's part of what we're doing. 
right? You don't want a football guy like me calling a volleyball yeah. match, just like right. you wouldn't want a volleyball player calling a football game. And, <laughs> and to gain more fans, I always thought that was important. And so talk a little bit about more college athletes wanting to go in and post playing days and promote the game. Yeah, so it's actually very common. A lot of us athletes have grown up watching all different kinds of sports. And especially with volleyball, it's just such an intense game to be a part of. On the court, off the court, sitting in the bleachers, no matter where you are, the game just attracts you. There's girls diving left and right for the ball, trying to save it. Tough serves coming in, big swings coming in. It's just such an interesting game to be attracted to. And I think that it attracts a lot of viewers. So a lot of college athletes are enjoying the game and being able to see how intense it really is and how it brings the team together. So I think that with having that sort of an intensity and being able to see such a team environment and a team culture that more athletes are becoming more interested postseason after graduation, just wanting to stay with the sport and keep up with it. All right. So since this is uh, part of your internship is to get used to doing interviews, we'll flip the tables a little bit and we'll let you practice what is going to be your career. You can ask, you ask me a couple of questions. Awesome. So it's crazy. Your story, how you created volleyball adrenaline. You should tell us how did it all begin? Yeah. So it's a long story a little bit, but BB Adrenaline started as Adrenaline Volleyball in South Dakota. I tell the story. I'm an old football coach and talking with you, you know that I still, my volleyball IQ is still very small. It's growing, but I'm an old football coach. And when I got out of coaching, I went into a fundraising company and my former boss, my first day was literally like, you can fundraise with anybody you want other than football. And those were the only coaches I really knew. And I was like, what the heck? am I going to do? And he said, maybe try volleyball. And at the time I knew a couple volleyball coaches in South Dakota. I signed them up to fundraise, literally selling cookie dough with them for their fundraisers. And it kept me from going bankrupt. And I little by little worked with some really cool volleyball coaches. And from there, I just asked them and wanted to be different. And I guess I, I said to them like, Hey, what can we do? to help you guys. What can we do that no other fundraising company is doing? And they were like, well, you know, nobody, we spend a lot of money on camps. And so the first year we literally put on a free volleyball team camp and I literally unlocked the gym. I didn't know I got some balls. They had to set up the nets. I didn't know how to do any of that. And <laughs> we had a free camp. And then the next year we grew a little bit more. And as I started stopping into gyms and getting to know the kids that were fundraising, I asked coaches, I'm like, hey, why have I never heard of so and so and so? And Hall of Fame coach said to me, nobody in South Dakota promotes the game of volleyball. Nobody talks about it, right? They talk about basketball, they talk about football. And I was just amazed by the athleticism in the gym. And I hadn't heard anything about any of these teams or athletes, et cetera. And so I said, well, I can do that. And this coach says, that's what you should do is help us promote volleyball. And so about nine years ago, we started a Twitter account and I look back at some of our very first tweets and it was stuff like Katie Fernholz, she jumps really high. Um, like, you know, really yeah. in-depth cutting edge stuff, but stuff, but as we went around, people were interested and, and we just started conversations about volleyball in South Dakota and that's where I live and that's where I come from. And so that was our goal initially to just promote the game however we could. And then the, then I got the idea that we need to put on a premier volleyball event because basketball and football have one. And so then we started SummerSlam, which is in now in year seven. And uh, it used to be the fu Future 50, which now is transformed into the Midwest battle. And little by little, we just kept doing things to promote volleyball in South Dakota. And it was awesome. And I think it helped. And then... To be quite honest, the recruiting aspect has always fascinated me because I'm a former college football coach. So I recruited on the other side of things. And as I asked around, I couldn't believe how different and frankly messed up 
the college volleyball recruiting cycle is. And you know that as a player, and we're going to talk a lot more about that. But there was a young lady named Katie Fernholz. She's a senior at Kansas State right now. I think she's just getting ready to end of her senior year. And she's from a rural town called Miller, South Dakota. It was too far for her to drive to play on a national team. She couldn't, it was three hours each way to play on a national team. And her coach is like, I think she's division one. And I was like, yeah, whatever you're, you're biased. I, you know, and I said, if she's good enough, college coaches will find her. And her coach explained to me, that's not how it works with volleyball. You have to go to these club tournaments and play on a national team. And I was, I didn't believe her at all. And I started asking around and literally time came and went and it was before her senior year. And she had offers from a couple of div- really good division two programs. And my whole thing was, I just want her to see what options are out there. So I finally asked a club Kairos volleyball director, put him in touch with her high school coach and said, take a look at her film. And he watched and sent that off to a few division one coaches. And before you know it, she had, I think, three power five offers, but it took that connection with that club coach, that club director to get her those. And then when that happened, my eyes were open. Holy cow, this is different. And I just started asking a lot of questions and a lot of questions people couldn't answer. And so I thought we obviously need to talk more about college volleyball recruiting because I followed college football recruiting. And then to wrap it up, how we got here five years ago, a young lady named Bergen Riley came along in South Dakota and she's a national name now, but in South Dakota, the thing she did had never been done going to national training day, playing on the national team, going to these invite camps, being a top at the time 20 recruit, and then a top five recruit in the country. That never happened. The Under Armour All-American game that she got to play in. These were all brand new for people in South Dakota. And for me, and I just kept asking questions and I was fascinated when she went through her recruiting process, how, you know, goofy it was and how one of the top prospects in the country really had no idea who was going to offer her and how fast it happened. And I thought if the number one setter in the country has these questions in this unknown. Think about not the lesser athletes, the kid who's ranked 150th in the country or 200 or maybe plays in a rural community and they don't get the same options. And so I started asking around and we had some connections in Omaha, in Minneapolis. And some people just said, hey, you should do what you're doing in South Dakota nationally. And so last year we spent a year researching and we interviewed some great high level athletes in the Kansas city area, in Omaha, Lincoln, in Minneapolis, and we got great feedback on it. And so we just went all in and said, we're going to cover volleyball recruiting. We're going to promote top prospects. We're going to, uh, promote events. And so now this little cookie dough company, which is still good. And we still do that. And I love it. We work with over 90, 90 volleyball programs. I think our company does. They've been awesome to us and we've promoted the game in South Dakota and we'll always do what we can, but bigger ambitions to learn about, go to national qualifiers and go to national tournaments. And for me and a lot of people where I'm from, they've never been to those before right? Where you probably grew up going to those. And so in a way I'm like at a kid in a candy shop and here I'm talking to cool division one coaches and the number one outside hitter in the country and college athletes. And it's really just fun and it's grown into something kind of crazy and we're not going to stop. So I, I don't know, that's a little bit of my story, which has now turned into our story, but it's always been important to me to promote the game because financially and with my business, volleyball has helped me a lot. And so this is my way, I guess, of giving back. So, wow, that's crazy with 
how much it's grown over the past nine years or 10 years, yeah. I think you said. What have been some of your favorite moments? Do you have any specific ones, any specific memories? What have been some of your favorite moments from the expansion of this company? Yeah, I was really proud of the Midwest battle that we put on last year. I'm proud of the kids that maybe we helped promote. If we helped it all grow the game in South Dakota, I'm really proud of that. When we put on events and we are literally a pop, there's no mom. There's no mom in this relationship, but I'm a mom and pop company and we don't have any big pockets sponsoring us. It it's replaced golf as my hobby and passion, I guess. And so I'm proud that of the way I've invested and stuck with it. And even though it is not about money for me or for us, and I think that separates us from other media companies out there, it's not about money. It's truly about promoting the game. And if someday we turn a profit, awesome. But that hasn't been what it's about. And favorite moments, I, the events at home following the first time we got a media pass at a final four. I remember Haley, who was with us at the time, we just were like, holy cow, we're five feet from Karch Karai and who was calling the match. And that was pretty cool. Some of the college coaches I've been able to meet, Coach Skinner at Kentucky, who's won a national title. That's been really cool. The relationships. And now seeing some of the athletes we covered in high school go on to college has been really cool for me as well. But yeah, I, I've been really lucky. And hopefully now as we grow and put a staff together, y'all can experience some of those situations as well. So anyways, that's a lot of bit of my story. But with the team that we have in place, this podcast is going to be about stories like that, about hot topics, hot prospects. But Madison, what do you think? What are some things you're excited to talk about and some topics that are on volleyball people's minds right now? I'm super excited to talk about a lot about what's coming up. The NCAA bracket, we're having our own bracket show. I'm ex super excited to talk about the matchups, what we're going to see, some of the upsets. I'm also super excited to see what recruiting is continuing to look like in the future with it constantly changing. It's super interesting to see how the top prospects are going to which schools and how their decisions are being made. And I'm also super excited to learn more about each athlete and see how they continue to grow and how this game continues to grow and what they can bring to the game. And opportunities that it's providing for young female athletes, I think is really cool. We'll definitely touch on some of those things, right? Oh, for sure. Yeah. And another thing about what we're doing here is important is promoting some of the big events. And Madison touched on this, but we will be live from the final four in Tampa. We're going to have our bracket show live streamed on uh, Selection Sunday. That's exciting. We're going to be at the final four. Madison, we're also going to be in Orlando for the Under Armour game. And those are things you've talked about that as a player, you're like, you were excited to go there because you didn't have the opportunity to do that. I've never been to the NCAA tournament. It's been something my team worked for, and we sadly are now competing for the NIBC postseason. So we thus having two more games this week worth hoping to get business done and possibly be postseason in the NIVC. But personally, I've never been to the NCAA tournament, the Final Four, or the championships. So I'm super excited to be able to have that opportunity and go watch the game I love and create content for our company. And I also think it will be a great week in Orlando for the All-American, the Under Armour All-American week. I've seen so many athletes and I've had some other friends do it and they've told me that it's been the best week of their life. And so being able to go and just create content and watch everything go down, watch the sport, watch the practices, I'm just super excited to continue to grow my love for this game and continue to bring it into my outside world. Now with graduation being next semester, I am just super excited to continue to build on it and see how I can take that into the future with me. 
Yeah. And I, and I think you touched on a couple of good points. This podcast week by week is going to cover the things that people, we may take for granted, right? If you're a fan in Nebraska, you probably have been to a final four. Or you definitely have watched several of them and maybe there's athletes out there that haven't been. And I went six years ago and I'm going to tell you the attendance was not what it's going to be this year. It's definitely not what it was in Omaha last year sold out. And that's the excitement of not that I was on the ground floor, but I've seen this growth. And again, I'm not quite sure what I'm doing here, but it's been really cool to be around for all of it. <laughs> and we're going to bring some of those things to our followers on our website, obviously vbadrenaline.com, where we cover a lot with recruiting, a lot with the hot new stars, but also topics like mental health, mental well, mental health wellness, mental health training, previewing, like I said, the Under Armour Next Camps that we've talked about, our Midwest Battle, which is a select camp, all of these opportunities, National Training Day program, will bring guests on from there to let people know more and more about those things that I, and now hopefully you guys as staff members are like, hey, what is that? That's pretty cool. And Nice. Those are the things we yeah. want to talk about. And is there anything you want to explore? Like you said, you haven't been to a final four, but of all the topics that are out there, is there anything, a topic you want to explore and you want to find out about, and you're interested in letting our fans know about? Yeah. So one topic that I really enjoy talking about and that I'm very interested about is the mental health aspect of the game. There's so many exciting moments of the game. And like I was talking about earlier, the intensity of the game and how we share who each player is off the court. It's also important to notice the mental health aspect of the game as well, because volleyball is a very mental game and it can be a very mental game. And so by spreading awareness that we care about mental health we are aware about mental health and how we like to learn more about it from the athletes I think that's a super interesting part of what we do and how we can express to other athletes about what they want to do and how we care for them and how we see them so I think that aspect of the game is also very important and it is something I'm also very interested in yeah, absolutely. And and I think that you touched on, and that's been something that we hear from athletes. I'm also excited to hear and talk with current and former college athletes because the comment that I hear all the time is I'm so much more than just a volleyball player, right? And learning about opportunities off the court. Uh, we're going to bring on a guest in a few weeks that talks about helping athletes transition from the end of their playing days to their career. Um, those are things we're going to talk about. We're also going to be able to interview quite a few of the top college coaches um, in the country and bring them on, uh, uh, which I'm excited about. And athletes like yourself that want to promote and continue to stay with the game and make it a career of theirs after they're done. You've already done some interviews with athletes, but the opportunity to bring on some top prospects and even their parents and talk with them. Is that something too that and we haven't even dove into all the recruiting talk and talking about top classes, the transfer portal, which Zach isn't on with us today, but Zach will be heading up the transfer portal, which is going to go crazy here in, in a couple of days and all of these things that fit. But wouldn't you tell people, Madison, that it's not for one age group, what we talk about covers parents to coaches to fans to athletes we cover a little bit of everything and have something for everybody yeah i think our company does a great job of spreading awareness of all different to topics in the sport so like you said we cover parents we talk to parents we talk to coaches we talk about the transfer portal we talk about athletes we talk about pretty much everything and i think that's why it makes us so unique because some There are some companies out there that are just focusing on the players and the top prospects. And yes, that's what we all want to know. But it's also interesting to see 
hearing from coaches or hearing from parents as well or learning about who the athlete actually is off the court. And that's what I really love about our company because I just think we do a great job of being able to explore every different aspect of the game, no matter if it's on the court or if it's off the court. And I think that's what differentiates us from others. Yeah, absolutely. And and, and something we're proud of, we want to bring to, and it's fun. I, I enjoy, I guess this, this is my second job. It's a hobby, sometimes a hobby with many hours, but I enjoy it. Every time I talk about meeting you, even Sierra, who people will meet later, my nephew and I, it's become a family ordeal for us, but I get to meet some of the coolest people. You know, this fall, we're on campus at Louisville. We got to know the Pittsburgh staff, which we're going to talk more about. Creighton, we have on our selection show, we're going to have Oregon's head coach. And to me, I'm like, that wouldn't, I don't know if I'd have that opportunity with other Division One sports. Volleyball is an extremely close-knit yeah. community. It is, very. Yeah, and the networking part is cool. And so what I say is my naivety um, helps me because I don't even ask, I don't even know if I'm asking dumb questions because I don't know what I don't know. And and so that's why we bring in experts like you. You guys will be the ones that talk the game and teach me. I'm just the one that's along for the ride and I'm pretty excited. But talk a little bit about what we do with athletes and some of the interviews and just some of the content we'll do on the website. Yeah, so on the website we have many different forms, links that you can learn about each athlete. So we have a page where each athlete will have their own profile and on the profile, it will give them all the information about the girl, some of the camps they've attended, some highlights, what position, where the girl is from. And we're able to explore this page so that when people want to look at it, they can just pull up her profile and get quick and easy information about her. We also do interviews where one of us will sit down one-on-one -on -one with another player or a top prospect, and we'll get to know them about what they're interested in. We'll get to ask them about the National Training Development Program or the Under Armour All-American or some of the awards they've received throughout their years of playing or how their club or high school season went. We just get to know what the athlete is doing and what they enjoy doing and get to accomplish or accomplish them for some all of their hard work before they even hit college. And so it's a nice time that you just get to sit down and pick their brain and get to know them and get to know what they like to do outside of the court, what their families and just get to show everyone who the athlete actually is and how they're continuing to grow their game or what they're doing to grow their game. It's super interesting. And these interviews are so awesome. And we also have other interviews where we talk about topics, like we said, mental health or mental awareness. We also talk about some of the top prospects and we'll do sh like a minute short clip on who the girl is, yeah. just highlighting some of her film, and highlighting her as a player and all of these different things that we have on our website allows us to highlight the players in so many different ways. And I think it's a great way for other coaches and other people to look at our site and learn more about the player individually. Yeah. And I think you, you really touched on it with the play the prospect profiles, as they're called, what we're trying to do is instill letting the athletes tell their story or us helping them. And because we talked about this, when I got into this, I, I subscribed to all the other publications and yeah, they'd give me this all tournament team from the Lone Star and all tournament team from nationals. And that was great. And we built all these kids up and then recruiting would hit and nobody talked about them. And I'm like, where is so-and-so right. -so going or where I've been paying for your thing to read about these kids and now recruiting hits. Now I think with us maybe being first in, uh, with that, that might change, but we do the in-person interviews, which is uncommon, but it gives you a look at some of these stars. Also, it's great for these young athletes that are going to be stars on the college level. It's amazing watching some of them do their first interview on camera, and they they learn along with us, and 
but the the profiles are to let them tell their story give the people idea where are you camping at because camps are huge i didn't know that a year and a half ago right you could tell that story you need to athletes are going to all these camps in a very short period of time which is a whole another topic but they're going to these camps and they're having to make this life decision sometimes with very short notice and we dive into that and, and give you an idea of hey Olivia Hendry, who we interviewed, you know, from New York City, here's what she's looking at. Here might be a roadmap of her recruiting. And it tells her story and it really is an online resume for them, which I think is cool. But we touch on a lot of different options. And I tell people, if you just want to read about your daughter over and over, our site isn't for you. We're gonna we're gonna talk about <laughs> many. We're gonna give highlights of many. We dive into interviews, but we, I think we bring a firsthand account. I think you get to know kids better when you see them and when you hear them rather than when you maybe just read about them in a written paragraph, right? So with that, we need to probably get going. There's a lot to talk about, but I think, would you agree our podcast as we go forward will be guests of all ages? at the college level of all different parts of this growing sport of volleyball. What do you think is maybe, I want to ask you this, what do you think is maybe so different with recruiting now than when you went through it four or five years ago? Yeah, recruiting has definitely changed a lot. First of all, I committed as I was a sophomore. So I was super young when I committed. And I think that with the new rules, I think it's super smart to push the process back because you're so young and you have no idea what you want to do. And I'm so incredibly lucky. I ended up at an amazing university and there was a path for me to explore what I wanted to do. But it's definitely changed in that aspect with coaches not being able to communicate with certain girls up until June of their junior year, I believe it is. They're pushing everything back, which I think is super smart. And I think it's allowing this athlete to take their time to focus on the game and focus on how they want to get better rather than rushing and reaching out to a bunch of schools and just hoping that you hear back from them and making a quick decision. Back when I was recruited, I had to do most of the reaching out. So I emailed over a hundred coaches. I swear it was yeah. crazy. My dad was like, Madison, you have to do this. You have to do this. And I just remember how long the process is. But nowadays with all these different social media platforms and how girls can use social media to get themselves looked at and highlight themselves, I think it's just changed so much over the couple of years. Mm -hmm. And I think there are pros and cons to both ways of how it used to be done. But overall, with the role being pushed back, I think that was super interesting because I think it allows these athletes to spend more time to think about what they want to do in life and where they actually want to go. And now they're given the time to actually sit down and decide. So I think that it's crazy how much it's changed. And I would not be even more surprised if it continues to change. Yeah. And I think people would agree. And, and these are all going to be topics that I'm excited. I'm like, we, there's like a million things we could talk about just today, but these are all things we'll address and not even right. from right or wrong, just bringing up questions in the volleyball game, I think is what we do. I know that's what I try. It's not what I try and do. I just have questions and I ask people and I want answers. And I figure if I have them, what do parents of a 15 year old thinking yeah, they're going to get recruited, but how fast? Uh, we'll talk about things like being given a 24-hour right. timeline. Right? What? Well, what's that like for a 16-year-old who's nervous? Advocating for yourself as an athlete, yeah. advocate, right? These are all things, and we'll talk to people in the portal. And we've already talked with athletes that say, hey, the second time around, I was a lot more confident to truly voice my wants and my needs. And, and those are all topics. And there's two sides of all those things, right? Coaches probably have an idea what they think and what they're trying to do and the rules they have to follow. And so there's so much just for that. We haven't even, we haven't even brought up NIL and we'll talk about NIL, yeah. which is something new, right? 
Yeah, that was, that'll have to be a later podcast episode. <laughs> Madison, you have, you are, you're what? You've experienced it. You're a, you're an NILer, right? <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I am. You it's are, it's so, so crazy. Yeah, there's so many things we can talk about, and we have to put one of these out a week. But I'm like, I could have a conversation like this every day. And so <laughs> people though, we do need, I know to wrap it up. And I want to thank Madison for coming on. This is our first venture. Anybody that knows me knows how technologically illiterate I am. And so I don't know how good of a job we did, but our producers will make us look good, I think. And uh, we just encourage you, give us some comments <laughs> on what you thought today, some topics that you guys would want to hear our fans. And we're excited to watch this continue to grow. We've over tripled in size in the last 10 months and on all different platforms. So that's going to be a wrap, Madison, wherever you are, we can look back on this and I'm sure we will laugh at it. And if you want to keep the conversation going, connect with us, social media on Instagram at vbadrenaline.com with an underscore and on Twitter at vbadrenaline. Share your favorite moments, your favorite topics in volleyball, things you'd like us to address and weigh in on the conversation we want to hear from you and we'll be back soon talking with more rising stars next week's episode is going to have a big time rising star and if you enjoyed this episode please share with others and leave us a rating and a review until then we want to thank you for being part of the vb adrenaline community thanks everybody <laughs>